Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romney. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on all things related to narcissism, narcissistic abuse, and everything else that makes up difficult relationships. You know, today we're gonna to take on a question that many people have asked me about, and I actually had to do some digging to really make sure I answer the question well, which is the question of, do narcissists grieve? It's an interesting question, right? Because everyone experiences loss, but what is a loss experience like from the seat of a person with a narcissistic personality style? And if you're new to this channel, welcome. Please join us, subscribe. You'll see that the comment section can be quite a robust part of this channel. So it's, a, it's a, another place to get more information from. If you want notifications, we put videos out almost every day. Just hit that bell and you will get those notifications each time one comes out. So let's ask this question. Do people who are narcissistic, do they actually grieve? Now grief is a part of the human experience. Human beings are basically wired for it. And for most people, it manifests as sort of a behavioral experience, a cognitive experience, an emotional, physiological, and spiritual experience. After we've lost someone, especially if we've lost to someone to death, we engage in grief rituals. We may withdraw from the world for a while. We may kind of take an existential internal journey and face our own beliefs about life, about loss, and reflect back on our beliefs about the relationship. We will often have a cascade of emotions. We may sleep worse, we may sleep more, we may actually have changes in our appetite. Some people may lose weight during grief, that's more common. Some may actually gain it. We may experience other physical symptoms. And frankly, it can be a spiritual slap in the face. Some people may begin to doubt their beliefs in a higher power. Other people may actually magnify their beliefs in a higher power. So it really varies on the basis of the individual. Now, probably one of the most famous and accessible models of grief was put forth by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and enhanced and further developed on by Dr. David Kessler. Their model lays out the stages as denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, and meaning and purpose. Most people will go through these stages of grief though not necessarily in this order. And sometimes it takes a while. And sometimes you even go back and forth. You go, might go denial, anger, bargaining, back to denial. You might get to acceptance and pop back to anger. But anytime I work with a client who's experiencing grief, I always remind them that this upside down, confusing, painful experience is normal. And just like we would tell a person who broke their leg, to stay off that leg for a while, during grief, the guidance is similar. People are advised to sort of slow down a little bit, be kind to themselves, and to give their hearts, minds, bodies, and souls a minute to catch up. It's like, just like you give that leg a rest, you give all those things a rest too. So if it's a universal experience, what happens to narcissists when they experience grief? because they're obviously going to experience loss just like all of us, whether it's a loss through a death or even a divorce or something like that. that. Do they grieve? Of course they do. It would be arrogant to assume otherwise. They will go through grief as all human beings would. Here's the thing. It may not look the way it looks for other personality styles. So one of the biggest challenges that we observe in people who have sort of narcissistic or other antagonistic personality styles. It's their difficulties with empathy and intimacy. And simply put, in any kind of human relationship, not just with a partner, but even in a family or friend or anything like that, they just don't go deep. Their other issue is that they view people through what I'm gonna call an instrumental lens. Basically, they view people as a means to an end as a way to get something that they need. So if they lose someone in their lives, it may be that their entire grief experience and all their negative emotions about grief may be more about the loss of someone who does something for them, the loss of someone who gives them supply, or a loss of someone who allows them to maintain their narrative. They're experiencing what we call an instrumental loss. It would be like if someone stole your car right? That is an inconvenience, but obviously a car is not a person. 
Narcissistic people obviously can lose people and do lose people. And it can be painful to have your grief process happening in parallel to them. For example, if you and a narcissistic sibling, you, you lose one, your parent, their grief, your narcissistic sibling's grief reaction is likely to be quite different than your reaction. And that can often just deepen the wound of grief you're having and the kind of disconnection you've already probably been having from your sibling. And you may feel almost invalidated in your grief process and the entire process can feel a lot more complex because their experience is more superficial. Another major theme in narcissism is obviously abandonment. In the face of grief, Many narcissistic individuals, especially those that are more sensitive to the dynamic and the feelings activated by abandonment, may deeply personalize the experience of grief, wailing about how could this person have left them and their anger about the abandonment may be a very pronounced part of their experience. They don't see it as sort of the loss of the person and what that loss meant. They only see it as how it affects them. Denial is already a universal element of the narcissistic personality. As a defensive play, it is a primitive defense, and it is one of the narcissist's primary defenses. Denial is a way for a narcissistic person, or really any person, but in the case of a narcissist, denial becomes a way to maintain a grandiose and distorted view of the world that protects their fragile ego. They are also very frightened of vulnerability. So denial becomes a way for them to protect themselves from vulnerability and from, the, from expressing or showing or even experiencing emotion. As a result, they may also engage in the denial of emotion after a loss, sometimes laughing or trying to make life look normal in the wake of the loss, seeming like that they're tough. They're almost like too tough a guy or too tough a gal to even be bothered by this. Or they're simply trying to prop up their grandiosity by portraying an invulnerable exterior. Grief is a very complicated space for people who have narcissistic personalities. Because again, we can't be arrogant and th think that they haven't experienced a loss. Their loss is very real, okay? And the strong emotions that may accompany this loss can literally feel overwhelming for them. Emotions are not comfortable territory for people who are who have narcissistic personalities. And they, narcissistic individuals may spend most of their time avoiding emotions or dodging emotions. But the tidal wave of emotion that grief can bring is incredibly destabilizing for people who have narcissistic or antagonistic personality styles. Their initial impulse in many cases may be to rage at other people and get angry as though they are angry at the emotions that they're feeling and that are coming out of them. So it's almost like an anger at themselves, which is a lot of the core of narcissism, right? Those emotions become an uncomfortable reminder of their humanness and their vulnerability. Remember, they want to think they're grandiose and bigger than silly human things like emotion. As a result, if you're going through a shared grief experience with a narcissistic person, it can be incredibly, incredibly unsettling because the narcissistic person in your life may be experiencing or manifesting rage and deni denial where you are experiencing sadness and pain. It can feel abusive, sort of abusive and doubly so because you're in such a raw emotional space yourself going through this grief and then this other person is having this other experience that can almost feel antagonistic. Because people who are narcissistic have an entitled sense and entitled sense of almost personalization and egocentricity, basically everything is about them, they may actually feel inconvenienced, as I said, by the loss. For example, they might say about someone, I can't believe they decided to die now. I have so much going on in my life. And whether that the loss raises issues around money or timing or wherever the narcissist is in their lives and feels inconvenienced by this transition,
or the need to make funeral plans or anything like that. Whatever the myriad practical stressors that a loss may raise, the grieving narcissist may actually seem inconvenienced by all of it. The emotions of that they're feeling, the emotions of the people around them, the disruption to their schedule, the need to have uncomfortable conversations, none of this plays to their strengths. As you can imagine, this sort of diffident attitude can lead to major family blowouts, especially in families that have never called the narcissist out till, till now. And these blowouts could be calling the narcissist out as soulless. And in the wake of grief, some family members may, after a lifetime of being quiet, they may actually be willing and able and finally desire, desire to finally take the great showdown fight with the narcissist. Now this same personalization and egocentricity that we see in narcissistic individuals may result in the narcissist also posturing that their grief is worse than anyone else's, that nobody else is hurting as badly as they are. Remember, even in grief, the narcissist has to win and have the biggest grief, right? And in so doing, they may also minimize and gaslight the experience of others who are experiencing the grief. Oh, you don't even know from pain. I'm feeling the worst pain of all. You don't even get it. The narcissist detached, unsettling, and at times rageful responses to grief, again, as I've said over and over, are, can be very unsettling. Now, as you can imagine, let's just say one of your parents dies and the surviving parent or step parent or whatever is the narcissist. It can be very upsetting to see the narcissistic parent, the surviving narcissistic parent, just seemingly pick up with their lives, maybe even quickly enter into a new relationship, or just simply seem somewhat inconvenienced by the death of their long suffering spouse. And for children who have to watch this happen can be an incredibly difficult part of healing or attempting to heal from narcissistic abuse. The one stage narcissists don't really get to in a healthy manner is acceptance. A narcissistic individual may arrive to the grief stage of acceptance in a sort of dismissive manner. Ah, whatever, he's gone, I can't bring him back. And remember, obviously, this is a very defensive maneuver. They're protecting themselves. And again, a denial of the very emotions that leave a narcissistic person feeling vulnerable. Listen, neither I nor anyone else could ever say and have no right to say that a narcissist does not grieve. They obviously, they grieve and they experience a loss. Their grief may not look like normative grief, and I'm not even sure there's such a thing as normative grief, or it may not look like the grief of someone who has experienced deeper empathy or intimacy. It may be something we could call sort of an egocentric grief, an inconvenienced grief, an angry grief, and probably quite different than yours. If you are about to go through or think you might one day have to go through a shared grief experience with someone narcissistic, be prepared for it because the disparity of a narcissist grief relative to your own can be really destabilizing if you aren't prepared for it. I want to highlight a point that one point I was making throughout this video is I was really framing grief through the lens of death, right? Somebody dies and you have to grieve. But obviously a person can experience grief after any kind of a loss. And that could be the, the loss in, in a divorce, um, the house burns down as a loss, losing a job. But in those particular cases, a narcissistic individual will view that more as a kind of a call to arms, especially if they felt like someone wronged them, like a vindictive piece. Someone divorced me, I'm out to get them. Someone fired me, I'm gonna be out to get them. Um, you know, if a house burns down, that's a little different. There's no one to go get, but you better believe they're gonna get theirs from the insurance company kind of thing. But when somebody dies, it is quite different, right? And I think that the primal nature of that death loss can activate a very complex cascade of emotions in a narcissistic individual that they're definitely not only prepared for, that they don't want to deal with. Any of us going through grief will experience a cascade of emotions that we're not always necessarily prepared for, but we may allow those stages to sort of roll through us and we may not always be graceful but we'll get through it. The challenging part of grief in a narcissist is not only do they not always have an easy time with it, 
you can almost set a clock by the fact that they're going to lash out at other people as they go through and weather this storm. If you have any other thoughts about grief and narcissism or have ever had any experiences in this space, please do share them in the comments because I think sometimes something that really helps everyone is when they can hear other people's stories. Thanks again for tuning in.